This video will discuss serous membranes. Topic 7 of your study guide. <clears throat> there are two ways to learn the topic about serous membranes. One is to be sure to cover all these points. You look in your book, in the back of the study guide, and you'll find this. And you can memorize that and learn that. That is one way. The problem is a little bit difficult to recall that and recall it correctly and quickly. So again, we solve that problem by making a concept map. Now, there's many ways of doing concept maps. This is just one way that I've done one for this particular topic. So we're looking at serous membranes. Well, I can divide that into three topics. Right to the structure. The organization. And the function. So look at these individually and they'll help give you the picture of the whole. Well, let's look at the function, or the, excuse me, the structure. That's a, here's an organ. Well, pretend like it's the heart, doesn't really matter. If you get a, a, an organ and push into, let's say, a balloon, have the balloon wrap up around it, you have you end up with two layers around this organ. So this would be the organ. Doesn't matter which one it is, we'll get to those when we get to organization. One layer you'll see is actually touching the organ itself. The layer touching is called the visceral layer. B A S C E R A L. The outside layer, which lines the cavity, is called the parietal layer. Now, in some cases, the visceral layer and the top layer of the organ is the same layer, same tissue, just goes by two different names. So we have the organ. We have the layer of the cyst membrane which lines up against the organ itself. That's the visceral layer. The layer further away, normally, normally this lines a cavity. The organ's found in. The visceral lines the organ itself. Inside you have your space. The space is filled with serous fluid. And serous fluid but really maintains the function of the whole the structure. So you have the organ. The organ has two layers of visceral serous membranes around it. The serous membrane which touches the organ or lines the organ is the visceral layer. The layer that lines the cavity away from the organ is the parietal layer. The fluid inside the space is called the serous fluid. So let's go over here to function now. Discuss the structure, discuss the function. The function of this, very simply, is to reduce friction. If your heart's beating, there can be friction there. The lungs breathing, the abdominal cavity organs moving, all those things will be causing movement which should cause friction. The serious fluid reduces that friction. So now let's organize these into groups. And we'll use three main examples here. The first we'll look at the heart. Then look at the lungs. Then look at the abdominal cavity. Now you know the heart, the word we use for heart is, is uh, cardiac. For this one having cardiac arrest, the cardiac event, that refers to heart. Lungs, we use the word pleura. P-L-E-U-R-A. You may have heard someone having pleurisy, a disease of the lining of the lungs. 
And the abdominal cavity would be the peritoneal. B E R I T O N E A L. So let's look at the cardiac membranes first, pleural membranes, and then the parietal membranes. Well, the visceral layer be the visceral pericardium. Visceral, you learn from up here, lines the heart. We're talking about the heart itself, and peri means around, so it goes around the heart. So the visceral layer is the layer of membranes attached to the heart itself. The parietal pericardium The parietal layer, we said here, the layer outside of the heart, it lines the cavity. So this would be the layer that lines the cavity the heart's found in. The cavity is space here, then would be the pericardial cavity. Let's look at the lungs. Well, you have the same one, the visceral layer the layer which actually touches the lungs be the visceral pleura. The layer that lung lines the cavity of the lungs are found would be the parietal layer, so it'd be the parietal pleura. The space then would be the pleural cavity. And finally, let's look at the third one, the abdominal cavity. Well, again, the layer that lines the abdominal organ, the stomach and test lines, the one that lines them and connects to them directly would be the visceral. So that'd be the visceral uh, peritoneal membranes. The serous membranes line the cavity that the visceral organs are found in would be the parietal layer. So those would be the parietal. peritoneal membranes. And then you have your parietal cavity. So you've gone from the structure, the basic structure of all serous membranes consists of an organ with two layers of membranes, one layer directly attached to the organ, that's the visceral layer, one layer lines the cavity of the organs in, that's a parietal layer. The space includes or carries the serous fluid. The function of the serous fluid is to reduce friction. It helps protect the organ that way. Look how these organized. You'll find them around the heart, around the lungs, around the abdominal cavity, around the organs in the abdominal cavity. So the pericardial layer that is closest to the heart is the visceral layer. The layer of the heart's the lines of cavity would be the parietal layer and your pericardial cavity. The lungs, the layer that lines the lungs themselves to connect to the lung tissue itself would be the visceral layer, as your serous visceral. The layer that lines of cavity the lungs are found there would be the parietal layer. So again, the parietal layer would be the lines of cavity and the pleural cavity. And lastly, the organs in the abdominal cavity, the stomach and test lines, the serous membranes which are directly attached to them be the visceral layer. The parietal layer lines the cavity all the organs are found in, so that would be parietal peritoneal and your peritoneal cavity.